Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, and with me, of course, is my good friend, Anchorman Anchorman. Hello. Yes. So, that's right. At long last, uh, part one, our review of The Mandalorian Season 3. The first three episodes that came out, and so far, yeah, Season 3 has been doing pretty good, and uh, just... Boy, just I look forward to what the rest of season three has in store. But with episode, with, with episodes uh, one, two, and three, chapter seventeen, um, um, a pot state, and uh, chapter eighteen, the minds of Mandalore, and chapter nineteen, the con convert. Yeah. So in chapter seventeen, description: the Mandalorian begins an important journey. And in Chapter 18, the Mandalorian and Grogu explore the ruins of a destroyed planet. And in Chapter 19, on Coruscant, former Imperials find an Eminesti in the New Republic. All right, so, like, um, I guess, like, I mean, we could start with Chapter 17, but, you know, like, we'll come to you, Anchorman. Like, what are the first things you have to say about Season 3 and, you know, Chapter 17 and so on? Uh... I like it. I just, like, I feel the adventurous tone that makes The Mandalorian very fun to watch. But, like, I can't tell what this, where the story's going so far, but I, I have to wait and see where the rest of the season goes. Yeah, exactly. That that goes for the the past two seasons of The Mandalorian. You didn't know, we didn't know where where they were going until up to the end of the season. And the same thing goes for season three so but with chapter 17 what did like what did we think what did what are what are the first things we have to say about chapter 17 do you want to go first uh isn't there like he he wants to go on the quest to redeem himself like he goes to the meet back of his mandalorian sort of cult but they kind of yeah him. yeah that's that's the first one yeah and, and yeah, because it was I, like it was really cool in the opening where you know there's a ceremony, and you know what? I thought of this, and I'm sure some of you probably thought of this too. I thought this was like a flashback or something because of I said a, that in my review. Oh, you did. Yeah. So you thought so too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, like both me and him, and I'm sure for everybody else, like. Thinking that this was like a flashback to when Den Djarin officially became a Mandalorian and the ceremony and, you know, putting the helmet. But actually, no, because, well, even at one point, a giant, like, crocodile-like creature comes out of the water attacking the Mandalorians. And then, of course, uh, nope, it wasn't a flashback because, you know, incoming uh, Den Djarin in his new, like, Razor Crest, uh, the Naboo fighter the custom Naboo fighter, which we last saw in the Book of Boba Fett, and, uh, of course, mm -hmm. Grogu with him, and he wants to be redeemed, and um, even at one point, he, of course, visits his old friend, um, you know, uh, Carl... Grief Cargo. What's that now? Grief Cargo. Yeah, th yeah thanks for that. Um, yeah, Grief Cargo, once again, played by Carl Weathers, and uh, also, like, there's a statue of... Uh, IG, IG yeah, IG eleven, and actually, it's part, it's it's parts of IG eleven that are part of the statue, which that's really cool. What they managed to recover after his explosion, you know, uh, I thought he was completely gone. Me too. Like that was a that was a big explosion, and like surely at first, like he'd have to be completely destroyed, but actually, no. A good chunk of him did survive, apparently. He probably, like, scattered on some of, like, the, the rock and rubble. Yeah, exa something. exactly. And most of the rest probably melted. Mm-hmm. And at one point, like, Den Djarin wants to resurrect IG-11, because, you know, the only droid that he can trust and to, alongside with him, protect Grogu. But even at one point, it doesn't work out at first, and he's, like programmed to go after Grogu, and even at one point, um, those tiny creatures, the Baku, if you know what I'm talking about, that, that appeared in, uh, that appeared in Rise of Skywalker. 
Is it Boba Frick? Yeah, like the species. I thought he was gonna be in this season, but like it's just his species. It's yeah, it's the species, and they're vo- they are voiced by the same uh, voice, you know, Shirley Henderson, okay. and they like they try like they, they try to repair IG Eleven, and if I remember correctly, it might take a while for them to repair uh, IG Eleven, and it was pretty funny Grogu trying to cuddle with one of them. That was pretty funny. Yeah, it was uh, even in the concept art. Yeah, exactly. And, um, even at one point, we have to deal, in the, in the first episode, like, you know, uh, Cre- Grief and Den Djarin, they have to deal with pirates, and not to mention, we see the leader of the pirates, who a lot of people say he looks a little bit like Davy Jones, y- you know that, just... Yeah, he uh, kinda did. Yeah, he looks like... I was getting a, like a Swamp Thing or Man Thing vibes. That's exactly, right. not to mention, he looks like he's, like, half, like, sea- seaweed or something, because of his beard. Uh, did you know who voiced him? Actually, no, I did not. Do you know? I'm gonna have to look it up. No. Uh, okay. But anyways, um, even, like, say, oh, I have to mention this, um, they do mention, in this episode, they do mention the whereabouts of Cara Dune, and she went off with, uh, New Republican troops, um, which, okay, it's nice to see that they really hadn't forgotten about her and erased her. Like, you know, she's just absent. So, yeah. in case in case Cara Dune ever comes back, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I think she got fired from the show. I know, I know. But, um, and, and near the end of the episode, we of course get another appearance of Bo-Katan in a Mandalorian castle. And, you know, Din Djarin just, you know, wanting to go to the planet of Mandalore and so on, what's left of it, it's cursed apparently, and that's where, uh, in the next episode, um, you know, chapter 18, Minds of the, the Minds of Mandalore, well, we once again get an appearance of, uh, what's-her-face on Tatooine, and the droids. Uh, I think her name's Pelly. Moto, yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, of course, yeah, her and, um, you know, he gets a little a little bit of help from her, and, um, of course, Din Djarin making his way to what's left of uh, Mandalore. Not to mention, R5 becomes Din Djarin's official, like, astromech droid, and for his custom Naboo uh, fighter, which is really Even though cool. he's against droids? Yeah, I don't know, like, maybe he's... I, I feel like, don't you think, like, maybe Din Djarin's kind of, like, changed his mind just a little bit over droids? I think, in general, he's changed a lot. He's learning to be more compassionate. Exactly. In others. So I guess he's compassionate towards the droids, I guess. Yeah, and with his, through his experiences, and, his, and especially with Grogu. I always like the part in Season 1 of The Mandalorian where the one Ugnaught character tells him how droids are not necessarily evil. They're just programmed differently. Exactly. That is, that is, that's a fact. Um, and so, like, throughout the episode, because, like, Din Djarin likes, like, exploring, like, the wreckage of Mandalore, and even at one point, like, creatures are there, and mechanical, like, creatures are there, too, and Din Djarin gets, like, ambushed and so on, and even Grogu, because, yeah, Grogu, being very smart, goes back to get help from Bo-Katan, and, of course, Bo-Katan helps, and... At one point, she now we- welds uh, the the dark saber, which that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and so there's that, and even like say near like, I, oh, I do have to point this out. Like one giant like mechanical creature with that eye. Remember? Yeah. My, like I remember. Uh, what's that? I think that creature reminded me of another character. He's from the Star Wars. Expanded Universe. Um, he's from the Force Unleashed game. Oh. It was this character named Kazdan Paratus. I was getting that vibe from that character I, since he was, a, was a, like a chunker Jedi. I remember the, I, I remember that character, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting character. But um, what I was about to say was that, that that creature with the eye, I remember my, my dad told me this, it reminded him of General Grievous, again, because of the eye. So, yeah. yeah, don't you think so, too? Eh, I wasn't really getting General Grievous vibes. I can kind of see where people are coming from with it. Yeah, neither neither was I, but, you know, I can understand, and, you know, especially for my dad, but, uh... And, near, and like, near the end of the episode, like, 
uh, like, D Din Djarin, like, he's saying, like, the pledge of, like, the Mandalore, like, he's in the water. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then he, like, just falls in. Well, yeah, he gets he gets yanked in the water, and, of course, bo going out, out after, in the water to save Din Djarin, and at one point comes across, like, a giant creature with an eye, like... Mothasaurus, like whatever the heck it's called, I can't remember. Do you know? Not sure. Mothasaurus like, or something? I don't know. I can't... Maybe. But if I had to save Dinjarin, I probably wouldn't be able to since it's like super dark in that water and I couldn't find him if I were unless in Bo-Katan shoes. Well, un unless you had the equipment like Bo-Katan does. Yeah. Yeah. Then maybe. So there's that, and um, finally, at chapter 19 the convert, uh, which at the beginning of this, well, you know, where we last pick up in chapter 18, um, you know, Din Djarin and Catan, like, they at one point, like, head back to where Catan lives in the Mandalorian castle. Well, not to mention, like, they were ambushed and chased after, you know, TIE fighters, and, uh, you know, of course, they take on the TIE fighters, and, and but at one point, Bo-Katan's home, you know, the Mandalorian castle gets destroyed, and that's when a buttload of other TIE fighters come in, and, you know, they can't stay and fight them, there's too many of them, and they, thus they, they jump to hyperspace, back to the Mandalorians. I think they were TIE interceptors they were fighting. Uh, the, what now? They were, like, TIE interceptors, I think they were called, they were from, like, they have, we haven't seen those kind of ships since, like, Return of the Jedi. Okay, all right. So, um, but, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're technically still TIE fighters, you know, you know, yeah. but, and a different style of TIE fighters, but, mm -hmm. and after that, well, throughout pretty much the rest of this episode, well, we focus a lot on what happens on Coruscant. We finally get Coruscant in The Mandalorian, and it was teased, I remember it, it was teased in the trailers of The Mandalorian Season 3 that we were going to get Coruscant. And, you know, I was thinking at first, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we're going to get uh, Dead Jarn and Grogu on Coruscant? Like, they... That would be cool. That would be cool if they stepped foot on the planet of Coruscant. And it... Y you never know. It might... It may very well happen. But... Maybe this episode's a setup for it. Maybe. But, uh, on Coruscant, we focus a lot on one character who we hadn't seen in a little while, and he was, you know, he was in, like, the last two seasons of The Mandalorian, um, and that being, uh, let me see, yeah, Dr. Penn Pershing, played by Ahmed uh, Abt Abtai, if I'm saying that right. Um, and also, we get we get the appearance of uh, Eli Ilya Kane, played by uh, Katie M. O'Brien, who we last saw in season two, um, but at this point, like, it seems like, like, they've changed their ways, I guess, and especially after, like, say, Moff Gideon, he, like, he was finished, he was arrested, and, you know, being part of the New Republic, and so on, and, like, a bonding between the Doctor and, um, Ela, Ela you know if I'm saying her name right, and, uh, yeah, what what did you think of that? Like, it was focusing on those characters. Uh, I'm not sure. I just like I thought I kind of thought they were having the them the fill in runtime for the episode, but like I feel like they also want to answer just do their own story with other characters of the Mandalorian world. Yeah, I mean that's so. that's true, and a lot of and from what I'm hearing, this episode and what happens on Coruscant, like. This has to do something with uh, Palpatine and Snoke, you know, something to do with something to do with Rise of Skywalker. Do you, do you know that? Uh, um, you mean the cloning thing where they were showing like clones last season? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, if you've heard about this too, and what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've heard about it. I mean, I, I, I don't know, and I really, I don't think I, I don't think I, for me, and I'm being honest, I wasn't getting any, like, vibes and, like, n like, and it wasn't hitting in my head that, uh, this was setting up, t uh, Rise of Skywalker and so on, because I, I just feel like bringing this up, I, from what I've, I remember hearing this a while back that, uh, 
uh, uh, the, like, I don't know, Disney and Lucasfilm, they're, they're going to ignore the events of the sequel trilogy. I mean... I feel like they haven't really done anything sequel trilogy content. I feel like they're more focused maybe on, like, the Clone Wars era and this Mandoverse. Yeah, well, and the the events after, uh, you know, the, the original trilogy, so... Mm-hmm. You know, because of Mandalorian and so on, and the Book of Boba Fett. But I mean, who knows really at this at this time? But um, yeah. you know, even at one point, I, I was I was thinking. I mean, I didn't think of this. I didn't think that uh, you know, Ella Kane would be setting up Doctor Penn, but of course she did. And uh, even we get like, oh yeah, and we got the appearance of the uh, Opera House that we saw in Revenge of the Sith, which that was really yeah. cool. Yeah, and a calamari there, and the calamari was in, was in on this too. Even Doctor Penn saying to the calamari, "It was a trap." So, a, <laughs> a nod to Admiral Akbar, of course. Um, I love seeing the Opera House. Yeah, it was really cool. Like it's still there years later. Of course, like pretty much anything on Coruscant still there. You know, nothing's really changed. I mean, I I wish we could have saw like the Jedi Temple in like the background or something. That yeah. Or, or we haven't seen this yet. Like, yeah, there's that and the Galactic Senate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we hadn't, we didn't see the Galactic Senate either. But you, they might, they might appear. Um, I think, at, and at one point, they are electrocuting Doctor Penn or something like to make him evil. I want to say. It shows that the New Republic also has their bad side. Yeah, okay. yeah, which that's not good. Like, geez, the New Republic, ugh. Are they the same as the Rebellion? What's that? Are they, like, the same as the Rebellion? I... I don't know. Mm. I, don't, I can't remember. Um, you know, we do get to see more of Coruscant, like... I think, like, Dr. Penn and Ela, like, they attended some... They were at, like, some, I don't know, festival or something, and they... They had, like, glowing, um, popsicles. Popsicles? Yeah, popsicles. And who'd have thought that they would be glowing, so... They would have pizza in Star Wars. Yeah, that'd be interesting if they're, like, who they knows? cereal in Andor, so why not pizza? Oh, I forgot about the pizza, about the cereal, yeah, in Andor. Speaking of Andor, I've heard this, too, that it, because it, it, some people say that Episode 3 was feeling, like, Episode 3 was trying to be Andor. Have you heard that, too? Yeah, I've heard it. I mean, what do you make on that? Uh, I was getting some Andor vibes. Because, like, we're getting mm. scenes of characters in, like, this sort of political Star Wars world. Like, and oh, we saw, like, a bunch of Mon Mothma scenes. And this, and, you know, the fact that it, this is, this is all this happening on Coruscant. Yeah. So that's, that makes sense. That's understandable. I don't know. I don't, I wasn't getting any Andor vibes. Um, because, you know. I may have thought of Andor, but, like, I didn't get, like, an entire vibe about it. Me neither. I mean, the thing is... Andor and Mandalorian, they're two different Star Wars shows. They have different vibes, so... Yeah, um, one's, like, very adventurous, and the other is, like, a more of a... Yeah. Like, a slow-tone, mm-hmm. serious show. Yeah. And, um, oh yeah, by the way, because at one point, um, Dr. Penn received, like, was it Biscuits? Mm, yeah. Okay, like, uh, he... Ela like gave uh, biscuits to Doctor Penn, but moving forward, um, at the end of uh, Episode Three, we come back to Den Djarin and Bo Katan, and you know, Den Djarin tells the Mandalorians about Mandalore and not being cursed and so on, and it seems like uh, I think yeah, Den Djarin slash Mando and Bo Katan, they're both redeemed and part of the Mandalorians again. Yes. Yeah, so I hope this won't be the last time. We, like, I, I don't see. I probably not, but I was just. I just feel. I just feel like saying. Like, hope. Like, this will not be the last time we see Bo-Katan and especially Den Djarin. You know, like we we don't see their faces. We're we're going to again. So probably. Yeah. I mean, they had some of their helmets off and like set photos or promotion photos. Yeah. 
But with all that being said, um, the first three episodes of The Mandalorian um, so far have been pretty good. Uh, any last any last things to say on the first three? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I liked it. I'd like to see where the story goes. Yep. I just, I don't know what they're going to do next. Me neither. You know, we'll just have to wait and see. Like, you never know, especially with Star Wars. It's anything's possible. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, this was fun, uh, you know, doing this uh, so far for part one. Uh, thank you for joining me, Anchorman. You're welcome. Yep. Look forward to doing part two, uh, episode, uh, episodes uh, four, five, and six, chapter 20, 21, and 22. Um, any last words, like, you know, saying goodbye and such? Uh, thank you for having me on. Yep. And definitely, I, I should, you know, you should definitely be on board for part two. Mm-hmm. Yep, I think throughout the rest of, uh, of of this review of season three, yeah, it'll be me and Anchorman, so. But anyways, guys, so what about you? What did you think of the first three episodes of The Mandalorian season three? Like, what do you think of season three so far? And, you know, what did you think of our uh, review? Leave comments and give this review a like as always. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed our part one review of season three of The Mandalorian. More reviews coming your way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward. And want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Yep, he says that for me. We hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you guys in the next video slash review. Take care, peace out, and may the Force be with you. Always.